the hardest lesson for first time designers is usually about scope. And they'll have grand ideas, especially with the students I get in my program. They've been thinking about this perfect game idea since they were 12. And so it's been percolating for almost 10 years in their heads. And it's ready to explode and they're like, oh, so my very first class, my very first assignment, this is where I'm gonna let it loose and do my great idea and impress everybody. But they don't know the first rule of game development, which is you make your first game so you can make your second game. And you never ever play your, your ace card as your first play. So you, if you have a baby project, this child that you've been working on it for years in your head, that is not your first project that you do. You wait until you know what the heck you're doing before you, you know, butcher that idea and, and, and destroy it. Well, that, that would be the second golden rule of game development is uh, a small, complete game is better than a huge, not finished game. And so I try to keep them from s scoping out projects there's no way they're going to finish in an 11-week quarter. So they got things small, concentrated, and really good, uh, better than sloppy, huge, and not finished as far as a portfolio goes or how to, sh how to show off your work. Almost like an apprentice level thing where you come in, I got to teach you how to use the tools, uh, the techniques, the philosophies of, of how this industry and how this craft works before you're allowed to go off and like try to create your original piece. You need to learn how to make the basic bowl and the basic sword, you know, just flat and normal before you can go on. So in our you know, game art and design degree program, the design classes we start with tabletop stuff. Because I literally, it's gonna take me months, if close to a year, to teach you how to operate the game engines that they want to build all their stuff in. And if I'm teaching the tool how to use this game engine, then they're not thinking about game mechanics and you get very flat, boring games. Uh, as you could probably see here, I predate home video games. So as a player, I started out on Avalon Hill war games, hex maps with cardboard chits, combat result tables, all that stuff. So I was right there for when computers came along, home computers, where they would port those tabletop games onto PCs and let the computer do all the dice rolling and all the math and just let you know, yeah, this guy won, this guy lost, this guy backed up two spaces, whatever. So my real background comes from playing war games that ended up on a computer that I ended up wanting to design. I used to give talks at conferences where I showed how you could paper prototype a first person shooter with a giant graph paper map, uh, taking index cards and using paper clips to help stand them up and how you can map out a whole level uh, use movement cards that were broken up in half a second and, and how you can use army men you know, on a map to, to really try out your levels. I can sit at home, I have the design chops to make to design the game, I can pull off just enough art to make my prototype look good so it's playable and then the idea is to move on from there.